Hey everyone, welcome to Bare Metal Embedded Systems Programming from Scratch. In this first episode, we'll find out how we can blink the LED on the Arduino Mega using only direct or just set access in VS Code. No libraries, no frameworks, and no Arduino IDE. So let's get started. The microcontroller on this board is the 80 Mega 2560, running at 16 MHz. It has several ports, and each port is simply a group of 8 digital pins that the CPU can control together. Every port comes with two key 8-bit registers, DDRX and port X, that lets us configure and control the pins. Here, X can be A, B, C, D, or E depending on which port you are using. Registers are tiny high-speed memory locations inside the microcontroller used to configure peripherals, control hardware, and store temporary data. Most registers on this chip are 8 bits wide, though some peripherals like timers use 16-bit registers. The DDRX register, which stands for Data Direction Resistor, sits whether a pin is an input or output, and port X controls the output level, high or low. If we search the Arduino Mega datasheet and go to this link, this is the official Arduino Mega 2560 board datasheet. On page 10, you'll find this image showing the board pinout. If you zoom in, you'll see it clearly mentions that the built-in LED is connected to port B, B7, or PB7 on the microcontroller. And on the other side, it's labeled as digital pin 13. So now we know the onboard LED is controlled through port B, B7, which corresponds to pin 13 in Arduino. But we still need to know how to access this port. To find that out, let's open the datasheet for the 80 Mega 2560. You'll find the link in the description, or you can search it. Once it's open, scroll down until you find something like iResistor map or resistor description for IO ports. The easiest way is to press Ctrl F and search for port B. Then keep pressing Enter until you find the resistor addresses. Here. On page 96, you'll see that DDRB is located at address 0x24, and port B is at address 0x25. These are the exact memory addresses we'll use in our C code to control the LED. In the datasheet, when you see something like 0x05 and inside parentheses 0x25, it means this register has two addresses, one used for low-level assembly I/O instructions and another one in data memory for C access. In our C code, we always use the data memory address, which is the one inside the parentheses. In this case, 0x25 for port B and 0x24 for DDRB. Okay, let's bring the microcontroller to life. First, we include stdint, hash, include, stdint.h, to get standard integer types. Then, we define the CPU frequency, hash, define, f underscore CPU, and 16 million, ul, unsigned lock. This doesn't change the microcontroller's clock. It's just used by the compiler to calculate accurate delays and timing in our code. Next, we define a couple of macros to help us create delays later in our code. And here's the first one. Hash define cycles underscore per underscore loop and 10 ul. Cycles underscore per underscore loop is an estimate of how many CPU cycles one iteration of our future delay loop will take. And the next one is hash define delay underscore count and inside parentheses f underscore cpu 
divided by 1000 UL and divided by cycles underscore per underscore loop. Delay underscore count calculates how many iterations we need to run that loop to roughly achieve a 1 millisecond delay based on the CPU frequency we defined with F underscore CPU. We divide by 1000 UL because there are 1000 milliseconds in a second. This converts our CPU frequency from cycles per second into cycles per millisecond. By dividing by the estimated cycles per loop, we get how many iterations are needed for about a 1 millisecond delay. You'll understand this much better when we make the LED blink using assembly, where we can see exactly how many CPU cycles each iteration takes. So be patient guys, it will make sense soon. And then we define which pin the LED is connected to on the microcontroller. Hash define LED underscore pin and 7. Actually, this is the bit number of port B, PB7, which we saw in the data sheet. Now we define our registers to access the hardware directly. Hash define DDRB underscore red and inside parentheses asterisk again inside parentheses volatile uint8 underscore t asterisk and outside 0x24 and hash define port b underscore reg inside parentheses asterisk inside parentheses volatile uint8 underscore t asterisk and outside 0x25 here, DDRB underscore reg controls whether each pin of port B is an input or output, and port B underscore reg lets us set the output level, high or low. We use volatile so the compiler knows these values can change at any time, and reads the register every time we access it, instead of caching it. And we use uint8 underscore t because these are 8-bit registers. And about this part, uint8 8 underscore t asterisk and then 0x25 or 24 this cast the address as a pointer to an 8-bit unsigned value and the first asterisk it dereferences the pointer which means we are accessing the actual value stored at that memory address so this expression together lets us read from or write directly to the hardware register as if it were a normal variable next we declare a delay function that will pose the program for a given number of milliseconds. And here we say static inline void delay underscore ms. And it takes uint 16 underscore t ms and semicolon. We declare it here so we can use it in the main function before implementing it later. Static means this function is limited to this file only. It won't be visible or accessible from other files, which is good for encapsulation. Using static here is a good idea. It helps the compiler inline it more effectively. Inline suggests to the compiler that it can insert the function code directly where it's called, reducing the overhead of a function call for small frequently used functions like delays. And UN16 underscore T is used for the MS parameter because our loop counters might exceed 255. So we need a 16 bit unsigned integer to handle larger delay values safely. Now we start the main function where our program execution begins. int main void. Inside the function, first we set the LED pin as an output by writing to the DDRB register. And here we say DDRB underscore reg or equals inside parentheses 1 left shift by LED underscore pin. This expression 1 left shift by LED pin shifts the number 1 to the left by the bit number of our LED pin and creates a binary number with a 1 at the position of our LED pin 
in this case, bit 7. We call this number a binary mask. And the OR equals operator performs a bitwise OR between the current value of DDRB and that mask, setting that bit to 1 without changing any of the other pins. Now, we enter an infinite loop, which keeps our program running forever, while, and inside parentheses, 1. Here, we turn the LED on by setting the corresponding bit in the port B register. Port B underscore reg or equals and inside parentheses 1 left shift LED underscore pin. Next, we call the delay underscore MS to pause the program for about half a second. Delay underscore MS and we pass in 500. And here we turn the LED off. Port B underscore reg and equals not inside parentheses one left shift LED underscore pin. This expression creates a binary mask. Then we use the bitwise not operator or tilde to invert that mask, turning this into this. Finally, the end equals operator performs a bitwise end between the current value of port B and that inverted mask. This operation clears bit 7 to 0 while keeping all other bits exactly as they were. And then, before turning the LED back on, we wait for half a second. Delay underscore MS and we pass in 500. Now, let's implement our delay function. Static inline void delay underscore ms and it takes un 16 underscore t ms inside the function we use a for loop that runs once for every millisecond we want to delay for un 16 underscore t i equals 0 i less than ms plus plus i and inside this loop we define how long each millisecond should last. To do that, we use another loop. For un16 underscore t, j equals 0, and j less than, delay underscore count, and plus plus j. We calculated delay underscore count at the top. It tells us how many cycles to run for roughly one millisecond. But runs what? Here's what it runs double underscore sm double underscore and double underscore volatile double underscore and inside parentheses inside double quotation nop double underscore sam double underscore lets us write inline assembly code directly inside our c program it tells the compiler hey i want to insert a raw assembly instruction right here then we use double underscore volatile double underscore to make sure the compiler doesn't optimize this line away. Because the compiler might see the NOP instruction and think, hmm, this does nothing, let's remove it. So by marking it as volatile, we tell the compiler to keep it exactly as it is. And NOP is a single assembly instruction, which stands for no operation. It literally does nothing. It just takes exactly one CPU cycle to execute. By repeating this instruction many times, we can create a precise time delay. And that's it for this video. In the next one, I'll show you how to compile your code and upload it to your board. Then, we'll create a makefile so you can do it all easily, just with one or two commands. I'll also show you a few more cool things along the way. If you are enjoying the series, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's coming next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.